The awesome guys over at Fresh Tech Solutions sent over this R9 390 based PC. This video should tell you if this should be your next system or GPU, and if it's worth just grabbing one of these GPUs outright anyway. Stick around for this awesome video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up to date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. Let's take a look at the case itself. So this is an Inwin 703 gaming case, and while it's not very well known, in fact Inwin are way no more known for their sort of crazy cases like the H-Frame, it still does look awesome, has a huge window on the side, and has some really cool red and black accents with some ventilation in the front as well. It does have a bit of a crazy front design for the both the front I.O., which has a power button on the hidden side, or the side that's normally up against the wall or something, uh, but it also does have a really cool design for the DVD drive bay. Um, you do also get USB 2, USB uh, 3, and also a headphone microphone jack and a hard drive activity LED. On the back you get two water cooling grommets and a random hole, a 120mm red LED fan, PS2 mouse and PS2 keyboard ports, a serial port for some reason, an HDMI port, two, uh, sorry, four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, gigabit LAN and audio, as well as the outputs from the R9 390, uh, 390 which is two USB, uh, sorry, two um, DVIDs, an HDMI and a display port, and you also get the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna connectors as well. You also obviously get the power supply at the bottom with uh, the kettle lead in and the raw or switch for power. Now inside the case you're going to find all of the uh, components obviously. The one thing I would say is that this is uh, the Gigabyte Z97P motherboard inside it does seem like a bit of a value option for this one and probably could have done with being a bit of a better um, motherboard in, in my uh, you know my opinion but does the job well and fits the i7 7 uh, i7 4790k inside as well as the one stick of uh, one eight gigabyte stick from the Corsair Men Vengeance Pro range it's 2400 megahertz RAM that's a bit crazy especially for sort of stock and you also get the uh, obviously the XFX R9 390 uh, eight gigabyte graphics card now this one itself isn't too dissimilar from the R9 290, except for obviously the 8 gigabytes of RAM and a few extra frequency tweaks, but uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, uh, a bit later. Now, the power supply you get is an XFX TS850 watt. It's, an, it's a non-modular uh, power supply, but the guys at FreshTech have done a really good job of hiding all the cables and just managing all the cables that are inside the case to uh, you know hide them away and keep the airflow really nice and uh, all that sort of good stuff. Now, the storage solution is a Kingston 120 gig V300 SSD. I'm not really sure if this is the one with the speed issue or not, but it didn't seem too bad to me. And you also get a one terabyte Seagate hard drive as well. Now the main component we're going to be focusing on here is obviously the R9 390 as this is the newest um, pretty much just launched uh, graphics card and uh, obviously there's a bit of change to it so that's cool. Now the first thing I'm going to mention is that it's huge, it's not only long it's also really sort of wide. It, ex it extends past the PCI slot quite considerably, in fact as you can see I'm holding it up by thumb screws here and it's the length of the thumb screws and a bit more. So that's a bit crazy. Now on the back you get a really cool black plate with the uh, extruded XFX logo and some hexagonal ventilation on the back for all the rear mounted uh, components which makes this card look really awesome inside a case. Personally I'm not a fan of the heatsink design on the other side but that's just me. Now as you can see the heatsink does extend massively and there's a lot of aluminium and copper in here for good reason which I'll tell you about more later. First thing I would like to mention though is that the 8 pin and 6 pin PCI power on the back actually tend to um, kind of rip the back off your fingers um, because they're facing so the clips facing downwards so when you uh, you know actually try and take the power out or even sometimes put it back in um, your fingers get shredded on the aluminium heat sink so that may be something Zotac want to look at for example either turning the power connectors around or just cutting off some of the heat sink on the bottom there so you can actually get your fingers in and unhook the power if you did want to change the car take it out for any reason but nonetheless it does look really awesome inside this system and so does the system actually even uh, it has some red LED lights uh, has a strip on the bottom and obviously red LED fan on the back makes it look awesome in the dark and even in the light when you're gaming this thing just looks awesome especially with the red and black accents on the actual case itself uh, as well as inside the case. 
Now, a really cool thing about this card is that it performs amazingly well. The downside to that is that it gives off a lot of heat and is very loud. I'm going to give you an audio clip in just a second to see how loud it is. It's, you know, at just idle in a game, for example. So, um, yeah, here that is. So personally, I found that this was incredibly loud and it also ran really hot. With the stock Intel heatsink, we're reaching around 74 degrees um, on the sort of max end and we're reaching actually about 90 degrees on the graphics card, um, you know, just while gaming. So that's pretty intensely hot. Uh, hot. But the upside is that this performs incredibly well. At 4K on medium settings, uh, it got 77 FPS in Bioshock Infinite and 167 on Ultra settings uh, on, at 1080p, which is incredible. Um, by the way, all these settings will be for 4K, it was on medium settings, and at 1080p, it was on Ultra or High. So, as you can see, this performs incredibly well in uh, Battlefield 4 with around 46 FPS, which is definitely playable, and even Crisis. Um, Crisis 3, it was still playable at 30 FPS. It did drop down quite a lot, so um, you may want to sort of drop the settings on that one, but nonetheless, it was an incredible experience, and obviously, it was just really nice gaming at 4K because obviously you get the extra, you know, field of view, for example, if you're in something like Battlefield 4, or you generally just get a nicer, more immersive feel uh, if you're in something like Grid 2, um, which you've seen here. And obviously, at 61 FPS average, that's awesome. Now, in GTA, we did get quite a few drops when I was using my mods and stuff like that, but, um, you know, just on standard, we got 42 FPS average, and at 1080p, we got 103, so obviously this, this card is very capable um, if you're looking for 1080p gaming, and even 4K gaming is still, still very capable. In Unigine, we did have a bit of a hiccup with, uh, you know, only 22 FPS, but at 1080p, you got 88, so I'm not too fussed about that, and obviously that's ironically linear, because obviously 4K is 4 times 1080p, and 4 times 22 is 88, so that's kind of crazy, but nonetheless, this card, as I said, does look awesome. It is stupid hot, though, and actually I had a bit of an issue with coil wine. I don't know if it's just the specific parts that I, uh, you know, we got in this system, but it was an issue, and it was actually quite loud, along with the loudness of the system. The pros of this are definitely that it's powerful, it looks good, it's a decent value and uh, I, as far as I'm aware and from my experience with dealing with them uh, for this review, um, Fresh Tech are a really awesome company, you should definitely check them out even if it's not to grab this specific system, but um, the cons for this one have to be that it's, yeah, as I said, it had bad coil wine, it was very loud and it was very hot, but that's mostly down to the card, so you know if you did want to check out a system from these guys, feel free. Now for value money you're going to get a 4 for this one and pretty much 4 for everything except for style because I just love the look of this in the dark with the case. Um, it's just honestly it looks awesome and uh, if it wasn't you know stupidly loud and you know a kind of bad coil one I would probably look at grabbing one of these myself. So that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you haven't already hit subscribe, hit the like button if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, but as I said leave a comment and let us know what you thought of the video, the card, would you buy an R9 390 or would you go for the uh, green team option. Other than that check out a written review on the website that will be up at the same time as this video launches so if you're watching this now you can go read the written review um, and other than that that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to give you a second to click on the screen if you want the written review and uh, yeah, other than that we'll see you all in the next video. So thanks for watching this Titan GB video. Uh, you've probably heard enough of me already so I'm going to finish off by saying please subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out hard enough. Please do feel free to check out some of our recent videos both down below, um, they're uh, more recent ones and they're certainly awesome. Uh, feel free to click my face for the website and click all the links over there for our Amazon affiliate uh, link, our social media and also our YouTube channel as well. Other than that, as I said, please subscribe, like, share, favourite and all the other many things possible and we'll see you all in the next video.